Welcome to First Aid MC Clinical, free two-week sessions again. So I understand many of you might be confused about the time zone changes. So from October, they have changed the, the timeline by one hour. So that's why maybe some of you are confused about the timing. What I would advise everyone for the next few more classes that you are going to have with us is to make sure just take your time zone with the Sydney or Melbourne time because that is the Australian, the standard time that we are following at the moment. So that AEST is mainly basically just a Sydney or Melbourne time. So if you just check your Sydney time and, and that's exactly the same as our class. So if we say 8 p.m. AEST, that's 8 p.m. Sydney time, okay? So check it, especially if you're overseas, like maybe in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Pakistan, anywhere in other countries, you might be confused about these time zone changes. So just keep an eye on that, take it, find out how many hours is your country, country's time zone is either, is it, is it ahead of us or, or behind us? So just find it out, okay? All right, so tonight is not my class. So this class is a very, very important class for everyone who is preparing for AMC Clinical. And you might have heard about our one of the other mentor, which is Dr. Cynthia, who is also a Australian hospital doctor. And she has passed her AMC, MCQ and clinical within, within one of the shortest possible time that I have ever seen. And she is a very, very good, good doctor. She's helping our students for a long time with, with doing this whole role play sessions, especially the important cases that is super important for your exam. If you can, if you can gain like more knowledge and understanding about these cages, there's a very high chance that there might not be any cages that, that is left. Okay. So as I said that we have been taking these random role play sessions for, for, if I see that maybe even for the last three to four years. So you guys get that recordings of all those classes that Dr. Cynthia has taken in your portal when you join the course anyway. So that's a very huge collection. I think at the moment we are, we are at 110 or 115 number case. So it's a lot of, lot of case discussions and that covers each and every, every cases. And on the top of that, we try to do more and more new cases that's important for your exam. The, the basic of doing the random role play session is to make you prepared for the exam because in exam, you don't know the syllabus. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you don't know the syllabus in exam. Any questions can appear in front of your eye. So you need to be prepared for that kind of surprise. And we prepare you in this way so that you don't feel the surprise in the exam. So a lot of our ex students join these classes. A lot of our, like may maybe the students who have been preparing even after finishing the course, they join these classes because these are very important cases. Okay. So I will not take more time. So I will give this to Dr. Cynthia and, and I'll be here if you need me at the end of the class. Thank you. So Dr. Cynthia, you can take over, please. Thank you, Dr. Rashan. Um, hello, evening, uh, everyone. Good evening, all. Uh, hope you all are doing well. Uh, so let's start our today's role play session. Uh, today we are just discussing random cases, mostly the case uh, which is coming um, last few years and which is really important. So who wants to do role play? You can write your name on the chat box and um, yeah, we can proceed. Just give me a sec, I need to share my screen. Uh, Dr. Siva, you want to perform? Oh. 
Okay, uh, so let's start with Dr. Noor Karyakas. Uh, Dr. Noor Karyakas, are you there? Um, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, hi, how are you? Good, thank you, Doctor. How are you? I'm good. Can you be a bit louder, please? I couldn't hear you properly. Okay, I will try. Now, can you hear me better? Mm, still the same. Uh, and now? Okay, so let's try. Um, can you hear me well now, doctor? Um, I think that should be okay. Okay. So this is your case and your two minute starts now. Okay, thank you. You can start. Okay. Uh, so good evening. I'm Noor. I'm one of the uh, doctors at this hospital. Uh, how my uh, uh, so uh, Jones? Uh, I can and see that you uh, has the involved in motor vehicle accident. Um, I'm sorry to hear about that. Um, how are you feeling right now, John? Um, I'm okay now, doctor. Just uh, still pain is there. And I'm concerned about my investigation report, doctor. Is everything all right? Uh, okay. Um, uh, I would like to assure you that um, everything to, is going to be uh, fine. I would like to take a uh, history from you and uh, we will discuss further about the investigation. Um, so is that all right with you? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, meanwhile, I would like to check uh, a few points with my examiner and we'll be back to you. Is that all right with you? Um, yes. Can you uh, be a bit louder, please? I can't hear you and I think other students also. Uh, hello, can you hear me now better? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so uh, uh, examiner, I would like to check vital signs of my patient. Um. So your patient is vitally stable at this moment. Okay, thank you, examiner. Uh, so, uh, Jones, on a scale of uh, one to ten, how severe is your pain? Um, I would say, doctor, four, four to five at this moment. It's uh, not that bad. Okay. Did you take any medication? 
uh, yeah, nurse just uh, gave me some uh, Panadol. Okay. Um, meanwhile, uh, the Panadol needs some time to work. Uh, to work. Uh, so uh, please um, uh, bear with me. I would like to ask you a few questions. Uh, so where is exactly the pain, Jones? Uh, on my signal side, doctor. Uh, on that, I couldn't hear you. Uh, seat belt side. On the seat belt uh, side. Yeah. Okay. Any any pain anywhere else? Uh, no, doctor. Uh, okay. And um, uh, does the does the pain travel anywhere else? Um, no, just a pain on my shoulder and in my tummy area. Okay. Uh, do you have any vomiting? Still nausea, but no vomiting. Okay. Uh, and um, when was the last time that you opened your bowel? Um, yesterday, maybe. Yeah, I forget. Yesterday, okay. And uh, apart from that, any yellowish discoloration of the skin? Uh, no. Okay. And um, uh, so, um, uh, do you have any uh, history of loss of appetite, any loss of weight? Any lumps or bumps anywhere? No. No. Um, and uh, any history uh, any of weight changes, I would like to say? Weight changes? No, doctor. I didn't notice anything. Okay. Um, any history of high blood pressure, high blood sugar? Mm, no, doctor. Okay. And um, any history of um, uh, any uh, trauma or uh, anything uh, else? Apart from that, apart from the motor vehicle accident that you were involved today? No. Okay. Uh, so, uh, thank you uh, for the information, uh, Jones. Uh, now, I would like to, uh, if you pardon me, I would like to arrange for investigation uh, for you. Would that be all right? Mm, uh, sure, doctor. Uh, so, examiner, I would like to arrange uh, further investigation, which are routine blood investigations. Uh, 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 full blood examination, urea, creatinine, electrolyte, uh, kidney function test, and uh, I would like to um, uh, do an ultrasound of the uh, kidney, and uh, especially for the adrenal glands. Uh, I would like to uh, arrange for uh, tumor markers as well uh, for adrenal gland. Um, um, and another uh, CT abdomen focusing on uh, adrenal glands and kidney. Um, I think that is the, uh, the investigation that I can order for today. Um, uh, regarding the management, um, do I need to outline the management for the examiner or for the uh, patient? For the patient. For the patient. Uh, thank you, examiner. So, um, Jones, um, uh, I think because you were concerned about the uh, uh, test results, uh, because we uh, have found uh, some uh, incidental finding or uh, abnormal growth in the one of the uh, glands that is on the top of the kidney, we call it adrenal uh, glands. Uh, so um, the incidental finding was a growth which is 1.5 centim. And uh, I, um, uh, so you need to be seen by specialists and um, uh, further investigation will be uh, considered by specialists, which is called a biopsy, uh, which is, uh, pardon me for medical uh, jargon, uh, which is a, a sample of tissue will be uh, taken from the uh, uh, gland, which is uh, uh, above the kidney and to be examined under the microscope. Uh, which is the definitive uh, way to find out this uh, the source or the source of this uh, uh, abnormal growth that we found. Uh, so, are you with me so far? Uh, so, doctor, is it a serious condition? I'm scared. You told me it's a tumor. So, is it cancerous? Uh, we are not sure at the moment. Uh, until unless we do the sample of tissue, which is called biopsy, taken from the gland. We are not sure uh, uh, about the nature of this gland. Um, so um, do you have any question? Um, anything else that I need to know, doctor? Uh, yes, as I said to you, you will be uh, admitted to the hospital. You will be seen by specialists. Um, we will monitor the vital uh, your vital signs. 
And uh, our aim is to find out uh, the source or the nature of this uh, abnormal growth uh, in the uh, adrenal gland or the gland which is above the kidney. Uh, we will do um, uh, blood tests, we will do ultrasound and the sample of tissue, as I said, and the further management will be dependent uh, or uh, will be decided by the specialist. Uh, um, your time's up. Okay. Um, okay, Dr. Uh, is it Dr. Noura? No, no. Okay, Dr. Noura. It was really nice performance, Doctor. Um, I'm happy that you have a very good structure. You explained me nicely. You asked me about vital sign because patient coming with MVA and patient coming in ED. Um, like most of the thing you covered, just a few thing was missing. Um, for example, like in the history, um, you already understand like the CT brain, uh, CT chest, C spine, abdomen already done, and there is incidental finding of adrenal tumor. So your focus would be definitely you need to make sure like there is no like for example secondary or tertiary survey there is no other trauma injury along with any findings regarding adrenal tumor isn't it yes so um like i'm really glad that you asked me about all the like uh, you are suspecting about whether it could be any cancer as growth or not you asked me about loss of weight loss of appetite that was really nice um you asked me about high blood pressure those things but I didn't notice, did you ask me any headache, any vision problem, any chest pain, like um, any complication of the adrenal, uh, adrenal tumor related question? Uh, no, I didn't ask, doctor. Okay. So as I told, like adrenal tumor, you need to ask about few of the basic important symptoms, which is commonly present in the ED or like in our uh, gen med practice. So um, it could be like dizziness feeling, unsteady gait, like uh, headache on and off, or like uh, um, any vision problem you can ask. Uh, as I told you, you already asked me a very good question that is, loss of weight, loss of appetite, those things. Um, apart from that, and any family history uh, regarding this type of things, because if that's the incidental finding, you also need to find out any genetic cause as well, okay? Um, other than that, um, investigation. Now coming to the investigation, uh, Again, it was really nice. You asked me about basic blood investigation. But um, when you notice it's uh, adrenaline tumor, you need to tell more, okay? Apart for that uh, basic blood test. Uh, what investigation is the key investigation in here? That is that you, um, like, uh, you can mention like catecholamine level check in the blood and the urine, okay? So basically we are checking 24 hour urinary catecholamine, you can say like serum cortisol level, those things you have to mention, okay? okay. Um, good thing is that you also mentioned about other scan, like you are going to do abdominal ultrasound, that was nice. You can say like, I'm going to discuss with my senior, most likely they are going to do further scan, for example, because CT, we, we just check that's the tumor. So we need to know the nature of the tumor so we can do further more imaging. For example, um, MRI, there is nuclear scan, which is very specific for this uh, uh, pheochromocytoma case, like that is um, MIG-B. Another is we can also go for like uh, PET scan as well. Outline the management plan in here. Three things you need to mention. That is your key point in management plan. Because you found a adrenaline tumor, you need to uh, mention that you are going to refer this patient to the surgical uh, team. And surgical team, based on the symptoms, based on the patient uh, current condition, they might decide. So most of the time they are going for like uh, surgical uh, procedure. So either it could be open or laparoscopy, okay? That is one treatment. Another treatment is medication. So before the operation, they can go for some medication treatment. For example, like alpha blocker or beta blocker they can use. And also sometimes uh, after the surgery, post complication, they are also giving medication to treat that complication. For example, it can cause hypertension. So um, they are also going to give like hypertensive medication. 
those things you need to mention and also long term follow up um, after the tumor removal we are going to send it for further like biopsy um, uh, to rule out it's not a cancerous growth it's just a benign those things okay yeah. um, otherwise it has really nice performance thank you Okay, so let's discuss the case. Your HMO in ED Jones brought in by ambulance due to motor vehicle accident and his speed was that time within limit. So complaining about mild pain in abdomen and there was a bruise on seatbelt area. Otherwise, everything was normal. Your colleague already did a CT chest spine and abdo. So CT spine was uh, like all the CT scan was normal, but uh, there was incidental finding regarding adrenal in tumor 1.5 centimeter. So your task is take a relevant history, what investigation you would order and outline the management plan. Um, I already told Dr. Noor, what could be your relevant history in here? Uh, please make sure you are asking your patient any pain question, like do you have any pain at this moment? I can give you more painkiller if you are on pain, okay? Um, now tell me more about it, how these things happen. Um, do you have any pain, any bruise, and any other idea, any abdominal pain, any short of breath? Basically, you are asking like tertiary uh, survey question, okay? Apart from that, um, you can and now you can mention like look we have done like CT scan we have also scan of your chest your spine your tummy most of the area are fine okay so uh, there is no concerning feature from your trauma uh, so that's a good thing but um, in your tummy we noticed uh, there is some uh, incidental finding a adrenaline tumor you can say so what we are going to do i'm going to ask you a few more questions to correlate the symptoms is that all right you can ask about like um, do you have any headache funny feeling or any sweating any palpitation any dizziness any nausea vomiting like that you can ask okay um, have you ever checked your blood pressure um, like are you taking any blood pressure pill any chest pain heart problem um, any recent changes in the weight or any pigmentation uh, muscle weakness kidney problem for kidney problem you should ask about how about your water works bowel habit those things okay and also you need to ask about any chest pain short of breath cough appetite weight loss, tiredness, those things, past history of diabetes, high blood pressure, thyroid problem, and also cancer history, okay? Um, you can ask about like family history of uh, any um, like genetic problem, okay? Um, then coming to the basic things like smoking, alcohol, uh, drugs, medication, allergies. Um, so here, physical examination, not your task, okay? But if um, it will come, you can ask about like general appearance. Basically, we are looking for any uh, like facial changes, moon face, any stria, bruising, central uh, like obesity, you can check. Vital sign, basically we are checking blood pressure in vital sign and BMI. Mm. So head to do examination, more focus on the eye examination, that is fundoscopy finding we need to know. Neck, you can check thyroid examination quickly, chest, like uh, respiratory, CVS, abdomen. Um, abdomen, basically, you are looking for any mass or any tenderness, okay? Um, if there is any uh, abdominal mass, so you can go for DRE. But physical examination was not your task in this case, okay? Um, so coming to the investigation, so uh, look, you only got the CT findings. You didn't know about the other blood test, okay? So now you should mention about like, uh, um, look, I'm going to do basic blood test if that's not done yet, okay? So basic blood test, A, B, C, U, N, E, um, those things you can mention, like blood glucose level. You are not sure about because you haven't done physical examination in this case. So you can ask about ECG, like, um, can I get ECG findings of this patient? And 
uh, important investigation in this case that is 24 hours catecholamine level check. Okay, um, you can mention about serum cortisol level, other like plasma aldosterone level check, um, aldosterone renin ratio check. Those things you can mention uh, regarding the scan. Uh, regarding the scan, we can go for abdominal ultrasound. Uh, because we have already done CT, um, we can go for further evaluation test, for example, MRI, we can go for it. But there is nuclear medicine scanning, as I told you, um, that is like uh, uh, MIGV. You can go for that one or like PET scan, okay? But that will be decided by your specialist. So you can say like, I'm going to call my senior after discussing, we can arrange further more um, scan. Okay, so management, as I told you, most likely you have a call, uh, condition, we call it like pheochromocytoma, which is a tumor of the adrenal, adrenal gland. Mm, and you can like draw a picture and you can say, this is a kidney and top of the kidney, there is a gland and I'm thinking um, tumor is here. So what I'm going to do, I will refer you to the surgeon for further management. Most likely they will perform surgery, either laparoscopic or open. Okay, uh, and important thing, as I told you, like sometimes like before the surgery, they can give some medication, for example, like alpha blocker or beta blocker, they can give and post-surgical complication. Um, sometimes like people can suffer with high blood pressure, arrhythmia, so we can treat with antihypertensive medication and the like arrhythmic medication as well, okay? Um, if patient uh, ask you, doctor, what is the cause of this uh, like tumor? You can say like, look, I'm thinking it's a benign tumor, but sometimes like uh, it could be genetic um, or like there could be like hormonal um, like uh, imbalance can happen. Um, and people oftenly presented with like asymptomatic and when we have done scan for other reason, we found it incidental findings, okay? Uh, but uh, people might present with us like headache, blurring of vision, those things you can mention. Um, other thing like, uh, um, if patient asks like, uh, uh, doctor, is there any other medical treatment apart from surgical option? So you can say like, look, uh, because um, adrenaline uh, gland, that is basically uh, is one of our like uh, maintaining metabolism in our body. Uh, that gland is really important in our body. So that's why I'm going to refer you to the surgeon and they are going to see you uh, review your scan, uh, review your blood test. Based on that, uh, they will decide either they are going for surgery or wait, okay? Uh, but that decision will be taken by the surgeon. So your diagnosis is already given by the CT scan report, okay? Now your job is to co correlate with the history and relevant investigation and the management. Okay, let's move to the next case. Who wants to perform? Uh, Dr. Sonal Mule.
Uh, hello, Dr. Sonam. Can you hear me? Yes, doctor. Okay. This is your case, and your two mini testers now. Um, you can start. Yes. Uh, hi, Penny. This is Dr. Sonal. How are you doing? Uh, don't sure I'm not feeling well, actually. Uh, yes, Penny. Uh, can you tell me exactly what you, uh, uh, what you mean by not feeling well? Uh, do you feel tired? Uh, doctor, I'm feeling very weak. I feel lethargic. Like, I'm really unwell, doctor. Okay. And um, I can see that you returned from a holiday overseas. When was this? Um, around two weeks. Okay. Uh, so since how long have you been feeling unwell? Yeah, more than a week, doctor. Okay. And um, do you uh, do you feel unwell all the time, or is it just uh, sometimes during the day? Most of the time. Uh, do you feel that after working, after uh, uh, doing some work, or is it there even at rest? As I told you, doctor, most of the time I'm feeling like lethargy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm really sorry to hear that, Penny. Penny, can you tell me, did you have any uh, flu-like illness or any fever? Yes, Recently. doctor. Yeah, I'm having those symptoms, doctor. Okay, you're feeling that way. And uh, do you have any nausea, vomiting? I feel nausea. I didn't throw up anything. Okay. And uh, what about, uh, do you have any fever, uh, symptoms like uh, runny nose, sore throat? Uh, yes, doctor, I do. Okay. Do you feel any swellings in your armpit or in your neck? Uh, no, doctor. I didn't notice it. Okay, uh, so Penny, I can see that you used uh, heroin while you were overseas. Uh, can you tell me, did you uh, use sh uh, share needles while you, when you used this? Uh, yeah, doctor, I think so. Actually, I went to a party uh, with my friend and I was taking heroin for the first time and I promised I will not take it ever, but Doctor, that day, yeah, there was like lots of pain. So maybe we were sharing needles. Like I couldn't remember that much because we had drowned too. I understand, Penny. Penny, uh, did you uh, have any, uh, did you do any body piercing or any tattooing while you were there? Uh, no, doctor. 
Um, when you do, uh, have you noticed any uh, yellowish discoloration of your skin recently? No. Uh, how are your water works, Penny? Uh, do you have any burning sensation or change in color of urine? Uh, no, doctor. Uh, what about your bowel habits? Have you noticed any uh, uh, dark stools or any, uh, any um, do you have any diarrhea? Um, no. Okay. Uh, Penny, while you were there, did you go for anything like any bushwalking or did you go to uh, for camping anywhere? No, doctor. Okay. And Penny, uh, where had you gone exactly? Um, I'm born in uh, Australia. Okay. Uh, uh, Penny, I would like to ask you some questions which are a little sensitive, but rest assured they're confidential. So please feel free to share. Uh, Penny, while you were there, uh, were you sexually active? Um, no, doctor. Um, so no unprotected sexual intercourse while you were there? Mm. In, uh, during my holidays, no. During your holidays, yeah. Okay, Penny. Um, so uh, you said that you had an episode of binge drinking. Uh, after that, uh, did you feel any uh, vomiting or did you uh, throw up? Yeah, doctor, just uh, normal. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, did you take any other drugs apart from that? Mm, no, doctor. Okay. Are you on any medications that I should know of? Any over-the-counter medications? No. Okay. And um, do you uh, did you use any um, un, un, uh, unhygienic or did you have any street food or any unbottled water while, uh, while you were overseas? Uh, no. Okay. And um, can you tell me if you have any known medical conditions of anything uh, like diabetes, thyroid? No, doctor. Okay. Uh, Penny, when was your last menstrual period? Um, Penny's a boy. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, Penny, uh, thank you uh, for all the history that you gave me. Now I'd like to speak to my examiner regarding your findings. Uh, examiner, I would like to know the general examination of my patient. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, Penny, for waiting. Uh, so, uh, from your uh, history, what I believe is uh, uh, you have a condition called as uh, mitral regurgitation. Um, so, because uh, while we were uh, doing the, while we did this uh, physical examination, we noted a murmur in your heart. And um, so, it uh, corresponds to a murmur. Which we have uh, in the heart, we have uh, four chambers. Uh, so the mitral valve is the door-like structure which connects the right, uh, the left heart, left upper chamber to left heart uh, lower chamber. So this uh, valve seems to be uh, uh, not working properly. Um, so uh, because of that, uh, there's a heart failure, uh, considering the bivasal crack crackles that are there. Uh, other other uh, differential diagnosis that could be there are uh, hepatitis or um, HIV. And the other thing, Doctor, you want me to tell? Um, not sure. No, no, Doctor, that's it. That's it. You yeah. want to stop? You still you have one minute. Okay, uh, yeah, there's a cardiac murmur which uh, radiates to mitral. That's the mitral regurgitation, is all I can think. So it, it could be because of infective endocarditis, is what I'm suspecting, because of the IV drug use, uh, which has caused this uh, mitral uh, murmur and uh, heart failure. Uh, this is my most likely diagnosis. Uh, 
and uh, the other diagnoses are hepatitis, HIV, as well as uh, anemia, which is um, rare, and uh, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, C. That's all. Okay. You want me to finish? Yes. Okay. Um, it was really nice performance. Um, yeah, like uh, you told me the exact diagnosis. You say infective endocarditis uh, because of the IV drug use. Um, your performance, your structure, it was okay. Saying a few things was missing in the history because your main task was uh, history, physical examination findings, differential diagnosis. So uh, in this type of case, your predominant assessment area would be history taking. Okay, uh, because you will get the PF card. In PF card, everything will be there, and diagnosis differential. Yeah, that is definitely important. So, how you are going to make a diagnosis and telling like it's not those those are my differential? Definitely based on the history, isn't it? So, did you ask me any chest related question? No, no, I did not. Sorry. Yeah. Exactly. If, even though you are making exact diagnosis, if the infective endocarditis due to your drug use, you are having fever, you are having like all the heart findings, but you didn't ask me any history. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, it was really nice performance. You asked me about um, all the hepatitis related questions. That was really nice. But um, if your patient mentioned he's feeling unwell, feeling like lethargic, you should ask about all the respiratory related cause, heart related cause, abdomen related cause, like any kind of acute symptoms, okay? okay. It could be due to any infection, like any infection anywhere, okay? So let's discuss the case. Um, you are a GP, 29 years old, Penny, came with complaint of feeling unwell. He returned from holiday uh, overseas where he took heroin. So your task is history, PV, differential diagnosis. Okay. Um, so your differential, when you are thinking about your two minutes time, please um, have in your mind regarding broad differential, all the infected related causes like all the causes regarding feeling unwell because you, you you are not sure what could be the positive findings okay um and uh, you might get like if you booked online you might get pf card findings uh, but uh, face to face candidate you have to ask uh, to your examiner okay so um, Introduction in here, uh, if you are not sure how long the symptoms is, you can say like, uh, Penny, I'm going to check your vital sign first and then I I can ask you history. I want to make sure you are vitally stable at this moment, okay? Um, then ask about what do you mean by feeling unwell? So can you tell me what happened uh, during your trip? Um, any other drugs apart from heroin? Um, how did you take it? Was it like needle sharing? Uh, like if patient mentioned patient was taking IV drugs, just mention was it um, any needle sharing history? Um, any other drugs after that? Um, now tell me about your tiredness, feeling un unwell, feeling lethargic, how long the symptoms is going on? Is it getting worse, aggravating, relieving factor? Um, any other like activities during the trip, for example, like uh, any street food, unbottled water, have you done tattooing, body piercing? Um, and whenever you are asking about that private and sensitive question, please give confidentiality statement, okay? So are you sexually active? Are you practicing safe sex? Those things you need to ask. Uh, regarding tiredness, you can ask about 
how long your tiredness going on um do you feel tired all the day or any particular time of a day um do you notice any yellow color of, of your body any changes in color of your pee and poo any lumps or bumps in the body any flu like illness okay um any tummy pain if that's positive could you please ask more um you should ask about any fever chest pain uh, so here fever positive uh, chest pain also positive palpitation also positive um you should ask those things along with also a short of breath better <laughs> sorry for that um, you should also ask about short of breath and pedal edema. Um, you should ask about detailed sexual history, um, any tummy pain, any nausea, vomiting. Um, I'm sorry for my voice. Actually, I'm having a hay fever. Uh, hope my voice is okay. Um, you should ask about detailed sexual history, any ad addition, uh, any tummy pain, any nausea, vomiting. Um, you should ask about details about motion cushion and also ask about details urinary symptoms cushion. Uh, regarding the skin color, please ask about details if that's positive. If negative, you need to just skip that one, okay? If positive, just dig more. Um, general health question, past medical history, surgical history, SADMA, you should ask, okay? Uh, so positive point in here, um, it's a young man feeling lethargic and he went to a party for a few weeks ago in a holiday overseas. And <clears throat> he had some heroin there. Um, there is also a history of needle sharing as well. Um, so those are the positive findings. Um, most likely you need to say like uh, based on the symptoms and physical examination findings, um, that is your physical examination finding from the examiner. Uh, you should ask about general examination findings, vital sign, especially temperature. Um, other vital sign um, you can ask. Um, ask about general examination, how your patient looks like, like any pallor, any jaundice, any limb node enlargement. Um, ask about any respiratory findings, any bivasal crackles, um, cardiovascular findings. So here, uh, murmur positive. And also there is a... Um, a heart sound dual audible, but murmur positive and also pedal edema positive. Abdomen findings, there is also hepatosplenomegaly. Uh, urine findings, that is negative and BSL also normal. Um, so most likely you have a condition, we call it infective endocarditis that is causing secondary heart failure. And uh, you can explain like it happens when infection causing, like uh, when the bug enter into the blood and cause that infection of the inner lining of the heart. In this time, you can draw a picture. Uh, if you are booked your exam for online, still you can draw a picture and you can show to your um, patient like uh, you can show it to the camera and can, you can say like, look, this is the heart. And what happened like uh, um, sometimes like bug can enter into our blood and then blood can travel to the heart and that can cause infection of inner lining of the heart. And as you were uh, giving me the history regarding positive sharing needles, IV drugs used, I am suspecting that could be the source of your infection. And that explains everything because you are presenting with us like feeling lethargy, having fever. We have done physical examination. We noticed some heart findings as well. Um, so yeah, I'm suspecting it could be your heart infection and that infection causing like secondary heart failure as well. What could be the other possibilities? Other possibilities, it could be hepatitis. 
for example, like hepatitis B, C, D, uh, which is the most common like blood-borne infection, people who are like sharing needles, or it could be HIV, okay? It could be any uh, like travel-related infection, for example, like dengue, malaria, typhoid, or any STI, okay? Other causes, it could be like liver infection, gallbladder infection, bile duct infection, it can happen, okay? So you can explain in this way. Um, so yeah, there's the case of infective endocarditis, uh, secondary, um, you can say infective endocarditis that is causing secondary heart failure and other possibilities you can mention other, um, all the infection related um, differential. Uh, do I need to ask for the examination to know the findings? Um, if you you book your exam online, um, so online you will get the your task. It will be written. For example, like it will be written history within four minutes or five minutes. Physical examination finding appears after that and differential diagnosis. So after four minutes or five minutes, it will be popped out automatically on your screen. Uh, that is the physical examination finding. But what could be the best approach? Even though you booked for online, I would suggest for all of my students, whenever you notice about uh, physical examination findings on the screen, please explain loudly to your patient, okay? like. Don't sit silently and read by yourself. It's really like not the good approach, okay? Because the clinical exam is all about your approach, uh, how you are going to deal with your patient. It's basically like communication approach, um, those things, okay? So if I would be in your position, what I, I'm going to do, I would say like, uh, um, Penny, we have done physical examination, physical examination card in my hand. Uh, so what I noticed, your temperature was a bit high. Uh, otherwise, your respiratory rate, your saturation, your heart rate, blood pressure is okay at this moment. Um, other examination, like your general appearance was fine. We have checked your chest and we noticed some uh, you know, crackles or uh, crackle sound on the base. And we checked on your heart and we noticed some abnormal heart sound, okay? Um, we also noticed some swelling of your leg. Uh, abdomen, there is positive, like we have like uh, liver, spleen. We noticed that is a bit enlarged. Uh, we have done urine, blood. Those are negative. You can explain in this way, okay? Uh, but if you book for face-to-face, -face, you have to ask your examiner like all the findings one by one. Heart sound dual audible. We need to tell the differential to the patient. Uh, again, it, it depends. Uh, in your stem, it will be written like Differential diagnosis, you need to mention to your patient or to your examiner, okay? It will be written on your stem, so don't worry about it. But most of the time I notice like uh, you need to tell uh, the possibilities to your patient, okay? So whenever you are explaining about other possibilities, for example, like my other differential, it could be due to hepatitis B, C, D. I can say like, look, it could be due to any other blood-borne infection that can also spread through the needle sharing. We call it hepatitis B, C, D, but I think that could be less likely. It could be hepatitis like HIV, other travel-related infection. Uh, so whenever you are using medical jargon, you need to explain to your patient. So that's why try to avoid medical jargon. Explain in a simple term. Um, and in this way, you can save your time, okay? Because time matters a lot.
if differential diagnosis is to your examiner, should we still speak PEF about? Whatever your PEF findings, if your task is physical, if you like, if you will get the PEF card, my suggestion would be just um, explain to your patient, okay? And it's really nice repo as well. Like you are not sit, um, you are not sitting silently and just reading the PEF card by yourself. Like you are also involving your patient in here. Um, yeah, you can ask about other, yeah, definitely, like, always ask quickly about thyroid, any trauma, any, like, malignancy for sure, but it depends on your, like, also severity, duration of the symptoms, those things, okay? Um, other thing is that... Um, past medical history... Definitely, you need to ask about any other past medical history. If you are asking about specifically about valvular heart disease, that would be really great. If you cannot remember, that's okay. You should ask about any past medical history that I need to know. Okay, so let's move to the next case. Uh, Dr. Hazen. Hello. Hello, Dr. Hazen. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, this is your case and you have too many distress now. All right, thank you. Okay, 
So good morning. My name is Hazem. I'm one of the doctors. Uh, sorry, can I know your name and your baby name, please? Hi, doctor. I'm Jenny, and my baby's name is Tom. Okay, that's good. How how are you, Jenny? Um, I am okay, doctor. Actually, I came here because uh, um, nurse was concerned regarding my baby's uh, head size. That's why I'm here, doctor. Okay, so I noticed that you are actually here for vaccination and the nurse had some concerns regarding your baby head size. So I will just need to go through some questions with you just to check if there's something wrong or not. Are you okay with this? Yeah, yeah, doctor. Okay, so Tom is six months old now? Yeah. And how he was born, was it a normal delivery or C-section? Uh, just a normal resident delivery. Is he your firstborn? Yeah. No, doctor, that is my second child. This is your second child? Yeah. Okay, and for the delivery, was there any concern? Did he require any support or any admission to the neonatal unit? No. Okay, has the doctors informed you regarding any unusual finding or reading on the birth examination? No. Okay, are you having a regular follow-up for your child, the ones that are arranged by the government? Uh, I did that one, doctor. When was the last one? Uh, that was like um, six weeks uh, after the birth. Okay, six weeks. And also this one was okay? There was no issue with it? Yeah, no issues. Okay, and is he breastfed or how, how do you feed him? Uh, mixed feeding. Mixed feeding? Okay, and he eats well? Yeah, doctor. Okay, and are you noticing by any chance that his head is out of proportional to the kids in his age? Uh, no, doctor, I didn't notice until nurse told me. Okay, so it's nothing of concern to you as he's your second child, so you had one child before, so there's no no things that you can see through that concerning you? No. And what do you think about his weight? Is he gaining weight well? Um, I think weight is okay. Okay. And is his vaccination up to date? Um, yes, doctor. And is he opening his bowel normally? No constipation? No, no complete loose bowel? Um, no issues with the bowel habit. Okay, and how about his development? Are you concerned regarding anything for his development? Is he able to support his neck? Is he able to at least support his back at this moment? Mm, yes, doctor. Okay, that's good. So... So I need to complete and then the physical examination will come or should I like tell the patient that I will go to check the examination now? How does it work in the exam? Um, you can ask to your examiner and you will get the finding. Okay. So uh, I'll just need now to check the examination. So just spare a minute for me. Sorry, examiner. Can I know what's the finding in the examination? Uh, what examination findings do you want to know? Um, you booked for online or face-to-face? -face? I didn't book yet, but I think I will go for online because next year is only online. Um, so I can go through the, the normal vital signs and then general appearance. You can ask me all together and then I'll tell you the positive findings. Okay, so at the moment, how about the fontanelle? Um, Frontally, that is normal size. Okay, and how about the face appearance? How about the eye? Is it a, a protruded or normal? Normal. Okay, any other features over the skull? Is there any uh, prominent sutures or any variety in the sutures? No. Okay, and how about his weight? Weight chart. 50 percentile. And is this is uh, as the same like the previous or we don't have any previous data? Uh, same, like 
and we are similar. Same like previous. Yeah. And how is his height? Um, height according to this. Sorry, according yeah. to this one. Height is normal. Yeah. Okay. And any others like any abdominal swelling? How is his chest? How is his heart? Normal. All of this examination are normal? Yes. Except okay. circumference is 80 or 98 centimeters. Okay. So I at this moment can I return back to the mother or I only should continue on the examination? Um you can explain diagnostic differential to the patient mother. Okay. So I just checked the uh, examination finding. It seems that everything uh, is at the normal level. The only finding that's of concern is his, his head circumference. It's above the average. It's on the 98th percentile. So at the moment, I, I we are worrying about something called hydrocephalus. Sorry for the medical terminology but this is some accumulation of the fluids inside the brain over the normal, and it can cause a slight enlargement of the head circumference. So just to clarify and to be sure that we are not missing anything, we will need to do some investigation just to rule out this. We may need to arrange for an ultrasound for his head uh, and also to check if there's any blockage for the systems. And we will need to do a more follow-up for his head circumference more than the usual to check the uh, uh, reading of his head. The other thing, as you are not that much worried or concerned, uh, you may think this could be something familiar in your family. If you think his brother or his sister are, are the same, this could be something uh, happening in the family. Also, um, I'm sorry. I'm not sure, doctor. Are you asking me a question? Yeah, I also uh, may notice like, he uh, could be something uh, low in his vitamins, like low calcium or low vitamin D can cause rickets, which some deficiency can affect the head size also. But I, I am more uh, prominent that it's now at this moment with this finding, it could be a normal development. Mm -hmm. But due to the age and the concern, I would prefer to refer you to a pediatric doctor I will do more investigation and he will take more thoroughly history. Is this okay with you? Okay, doctor. Anything else that I need to know? No, I don't think that anything would be at the moment. But as I told you, we will need to arrange for a follow-up and I will refer him to a pediatric doctor just to do some thoroughly investigation. Um, okay, Dr. Hazam, it was really nice performance. Most of the thing you mentioned, um, I don't think you uh, missed anything. Uh, just I'm checking. Uh, did you ask uh, the mom any trauma history? No, uh, I didn't. And uh, I noticed you asked me about some development uh, question, for example, like uh, see to like with support and how about the neck. That was really nice. Mm -hmm. um, but did you ask me any epilepsy or any like? Uh, yeah, how about the home situation? Like, just a routine checkup. Um, yeah, good that later on you asked me any family history of similar situation. Can um, I ask, like, should I completely ask about everything separate or just ask if there's any other concern or if he's doing well otherwise? Or should I ask about specific, like, as you said, epilepsy or something like this? You should ask specifically. Okay. If not asking specifically, you will not get the answer. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, like, uh, yeah, physical examination findings, you will get PEP card and whatever the card is, like, if you get, like, positive findings, so like, for example, all the normal findings, any positive findings, um, again, advice, not only for you, like, all other students, it would be, like, just read it loudly, Engage your patient with you, okay? Yeah. Um, and how you explain diagnosis differential, that was really nice. So just mention like, look, 
I am thinking because there is no other concerning feature. So I'm thinking it most likely familiar. We call it just macro uh, like cephaly or like big head. Um, other reason like it could be hydrocephalus. So after that, you can explain what is hydrocephalus. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was really nice performance, Dr. Hasan. Okay. Thank you. So let's discuss the case. It's a six months old uh, baby boy brought in by mom in your GP practice for their routine vaccination. Prior to vaccine, nurse was concerned uh, because uh, they, they were plotting patient chart and noticed there was a discrepancy. Uh, head circumference was 98 centile. Um, weight was normal. So in your task is taking his GP fee diagnosis in the um, in here, you should ask about um, same like uh, introduce yourself nicely. Ask about mom like, do you have any specific concern? So mom will tell like, doctor, I was fine, but uh, nurse nurse told me that my baby having uh, like big head. That is like a head uh, um, percentile was ninety eight or. Uh, his circumference was big. Um, that time you can ask about, do you notice any other problem? For example, any trauma to the head, um, any recent fever, any infection, those things you can ask and then ask about growth and development. So you all know that growth and development question. Uh, baby is only six months old. So you can ask about all the fine motor, gross motor language and the social things, okay? Just try to make sure like there is no growth and developmental issue, okay? Because there are some cases that is related with developmental delay. So our main aim, it should be like there is no developmental delay. Uh, ask about old baby question, how about baby's part? Um, how does baby's eating, like feeding habit, um, pee and poo, um, then bilisma, details birth history, was it normal, was an already very immunization up to date? Uh, how about nutrition? How about development? Are you happy with uh, his growth? Um, how about body's weight? Social situation, uh, mitigation allergy, family history of similar type of problem um, or any bad defect in the family, um, you should ask, okay? Uh, regarding that, like uh, big head related differential because it could be due to hydrocephalus and hydrocephalus or any other like, uh, um, like uh, causes of the big head, uh, patient might have like infective feature, epilepsy, seizure, feet. So those things you should ask, okay? Along with any trauma or any brain injury, that is really important. Uh, so as I mentioned, birth history details, any infection during the birth, medication complication, uh, or any, um, like during the delivery, any complication happened uh, after the delivery, how was the recovery time, did big test was done after the delivery? Please ask those questions, okay? As I told you, rule out other developmental delay, um, like rule out epilepsy, uh, vision and hearing problem, uh, because most of the baby, uh, like if the baby uh, is born in Australia, so like there is routine investigation, like six weeks, they are checking with like uh, hearing as well. Um, you can ask about how was the routine uh, checkup, any injury. Uh, baby is only six months, so definitely he is not able to tell any headache, but you can ask about any crying, excessive crying, how about the home situation, any family history of similar problem. Okay, ask those things. Physical examination, um, basically we need to focus on general appearance, vital sign, growth chart, um, any congenital uh, or any dysmorphic feature you are looking for. Um, you can check head for suture line, as I told, dysmorphic feature and developmental assessment, okay? So based on the history and differential, I'm thinking, there is no concerning feature. So I'm thinking it's a, like just a big head, uh, 
benign familia like macrocephaly um so sometimes it runs in the family other reason it could be due to like excess fluid in the brain we call it hydrocephalus okay that's why like i'm going to like review or follow up your baby as well anytime if you notice any fever um like uh, any jerky movement um just come to the emergency department okay um management not your task but if management will come you can say like i haven't noticed any signs symptoms of any other abnormal feature so at this moment we are just going to monitor but you need to keep warning symptoms as well okay so any of the warning symptoms we need to go for further imaging Uh, you can explain what is uh, macrocephaly, why these things happen, um, and basically uh, macrocephaly, that is the harmless, and that condition doesn't need to be treated. Uh, this condition is called benign familial macrocephaly or big head, okay? Uh, people, uh, child who, who are having macrocephaly, they sometimes um, can have like epilepsy or autism. That's why you need to rule out those questions, okay? Um, so that's the case of macrocephaly. Uh, which is a, just a benign familial, like large head. Um, who will be the next person? Uh, length of the baby, you mean height? Uh, it not, not necessarily, like uh, benign macrocephaly, like uh, as I told you, um, if you are not finding any concerning feature, baby is like healthy, um, as long as baby, um, like there is no other feature like uh, um, appetite is okay, feeding well, nutrition development, all are okay. No other symptoms except just the big head. Um, so. You can say it just a benign microcephaly. I'm not sure about the length, but uh, it would be just a normal. For example, in this case, the baby's weight was normal. Uh, who will be the next person? Dr. Javeria Khushit, are you there? Um, okay, so that's the bite sma. Thank Dr. Saida. She already explained that one. Yeah, that is B for birth history, I for immunization, N for nutrition, D for development, um, S for social history, M for medication, and A for allergies. So you should ask about those things and that's the pediatric case like a structure, okay? For example, there is a medicine case. You need to follow a specific structure for gynae and ops like ONG. You should follow like ONG structure. Uh, peers, same, peers structure, psychetic, MSC, those things. You need to follow psychetic structure, okay? So as this is the role play session, I'm not going to discuss with you with the structure, okay? For the structure, uh, like you need to um, 
attend that theory course. Okay, in theory course, like uh, Dr. Dr. Arshad will discuss all the cluster wise along with the structure. Hello, Dr. Javeria. Can you hear me? Hi, doctor. I can hear you. Thank you. Uh, so this is your case and your two minute starts. Now. You can start. Uh, hi, I'm Javeria, one of the doctors here in the emergency department. Uh, nice to meet you, Miss uh, Pointer. Uh, Miss Pointer, I just uh, want to ask you uh, uh, something. Before that, I'll check something with the examiner. Uh, dear examiner, is my patient hemodynamically stable enough to continue? Yeah, you can proceed. Um, thank you. Uh, so, uh, Miss Pointer, uh, could you tell me more about your uh, how you're feeling? Um, doctor, I'm not feeling well. Actually, I'm having like tummy pain. Uh, I'm really sorry to hear about that. Uh, are you allergic to any painkillers? No, doctor. Would you want any painkillers right now? Uh, yeah. Um, dear examiner, I'd like to give my patient painkillers. Uh, so, uh, could you uh, t uh, tell me uh, how uh, severe is your pain from 1 to 10, with 10 being worst? Uh, Right now, doctor is like around six or seven. Uh, I'd like to move my patient uh, to the resuscitation cubicle. And uh, as you have pain in your lower tummy, is it uh, all over the lower tummy or is it on one particular side? Uh, just my lower tummy. Uh, and uh, uh, did it begin suddenly or gradually? Mm, gradually, doctor. And uh, is it getting worse? Yeah. Mm, and uh, I'm sorry to hear about that. And is the pain going anywhere? Uh, it's going on my back. And uh, anything that makes it better or worse? Mm, no, doctor. And uh, could you describe the nature of the pain? It's a dull pain. Uh, sorry? It's a dull type of pain. Dull pain. Okay. And uh, have you ever had this similar pain before? No. Um, 
and uh, along with the pain are you having any symptoms like uh, vomiting i feel nausea uh, okay and uh, do uh, do you uh, did you pass any uh, urine i did uh, so uh, do you uh, have any change in color uh, of your urine mm -hmm. no uh, any uh, pain while passing urine no doctor uh, what about your uh, bowel habit any diarrhea or constipation uh, no uh, do you have any bleeding or discharge from down below um, i noticed some discharge uh, from my private area uh, when was that uh, just for a few days uh, uh, and uh, uh, could you describe the rash, uh, the discharge for me? Uh, yeah, it's just a yellow color. Uh, and uh, is it uh, large or small in amount? Um, a small amount. And uh, any particular smell associated with it? No, doctor. And uh, what is the color? Yellow color. Uh, Okay, and uh, uh, do uh, do you have any rash? No. Any fever? No. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 but, uh, uh, I don't uh, have any fever, but I feel feverish, doctor. Uh, okay, and uh, uh, do you have any uh, runny nose or sore throat? No. Uh, Miss Janela, are you sexually active? Uh, whatever we discuss will remain between us. Yes, Doctor, I am. Um, and uh, do, do you practice safe uh, intercourse with the use of condoms? Um, I am taking oral contraceptive pills. So most of the time I'm not using like barrier method. Um. Uh, I'm going to ask you a few personal questions uh, to help you. So, do you have any history uh, of multiple sexual partners? Um, I'm having a stable boyfriend now. Okay. And uh, do you... Uh, 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 could you tell me about the uh, roots of... Uh, like, do you have practice oral sex? Hmm. No. Uh, okay. Um, and uh, what about uh, inner sex? No. Uh, okay. And uh, have you noticed a similar discharge in your partner? Uh, I'm not aware of that. Um, and uh, uh, when was your last menstrual period? Uh, three weeks ago. Are you periods regular? Yeah. Uh, any uh, excessive pain or bleeding during your periods? No. Uh, have you done your cervical screening? Uh, no, doctor. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, and uh, 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 have you ever been pregnant? No. Is there a chance you could be pregnant right now? I'm not sure because as I told you, I'm taking oral contraceptive pills. Do you have any uh, breast tenderness? No. Uh, 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 okay. Do you have any past medical or surgical conditions I should be aware of? Like what? Uh, like any uh, bleeding disorders uh, that, that uh, mm. you, you may be... Um, sorry. Yeah. No. Um. Okay, uh, any history of sexual, uh, 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 any sexually transmitted infections? No. Um, and uh, uh, any uh, 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 any uh, surgical condition like uh, 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 removal of appendix? No. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, do you smoke or drink alcohol? Mm, I do, doctor. You drink. Uh, uh, how many drinks? Maybe one or two glass per day. 
Uh, okay. Um, and uh, 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 okay. And uh, do you take a, 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 any uh, any medications apart from oral contraceptive pills? Mm, no. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, so much. Uh, I uh, now like to uh do uh examination. So on general appearance, I want to know, uh, know if my patient is active, irritable, or drowsy. Any pallid ectorous cyanosis? Yeah. Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, patient uh, looks well, unwell, sick. Um, I can see that your blood pressure is normal. Uh, your oxygen saturation is normal, but you do have temperature. And uh, I, uh, there is a uh, pain uh, on uh, both the sides, uh, lower sides of your tummy. And, uh, uh, but uh, you, you don't have any signs for uh, uh, appendixitis, which is one uh, edge of uh, one, end of the um, gut, uh, one part of the gut, and uh, uh, and oh, okay. Okay, uh, Dr. Javi, yeah. Uh, that was really nice history taking, but uh, you spend all of your time to do, uh, like, take a history, isn't it? Yes. Um, so, as I told you, like, time management is really tricky part in this exam. Um, it was really nice. I think most of the question you already asked me in the history. Um, you, you took almost like seven minutes history. Okay. Yeah. yeah, because um, you have like four tasks. So definitely you need to manage your time accordingly. Okay. Right. Uh, do you have any study partner? Um, yes. Okay. So the only advice for you is like just practice role play as much as you can, okay? All right. Okay. Thank you. All the best. Um, your history was really nice. Like you didn't miss anything, but to be honest, like uh, um, seven minutes definitely like it's not gonna be effective. So you need to cut short your history, okay? Yeah. So let's discuss the case. You are the HMO in an emergency department and your next patient is a 27 years old Miss uh, Janela Pointer who presented with pain in, uh, in her lower tummy for a few hours. So your task is to take a focused history, be fee, arrange appropriate investigation, discuss your diagnosis and management with the patient, okay? It's a very long case. So please um, manage your time accordingly, okay? What could be your differential if a reproductive woman like this is a patient coming with uh, um, lower tummy pain? Uh, what could be your differential? So you need to think about PID, any pregnancy related differential. For example, it could be ectopic, any miscarriage, it could be any, any rupture, ovarian cyst, any torsion of the ovary, any uh, like ovulation pain, ovarian tumor, um, other surgical emergency, for example, appendicitis, um, any diverticulitis, Crohn's disease, UTI, those things, okay, or any polonephritis it could be. Uh, so same uh, in here, you should ask about history of presenting complaints. So basically patient main complaint is tummy pain. You need to ask about all the sorts of questions like site, onset, radiation, um, type of the pain, severity, aggravating, relieving factor, any associated symptoms, those things, okay? Um, associated symptoms, so do you have any nausea, any vomiting? How about your urinary symptoms? Any uh, uh, bladder problem, any dysuria, any color changes of your urine, bowel habit. Can you tell me your regular bowel habit, uh, any constipation, any diarrhea, those things? And also, uh, you should ask about like uh, private and sensitive portion. So again, whenever you are asking private and sensitive question, give confidentiality statement to your patient, okay? Mention that um, whatever we are going to discuss, it will be remain confidential between you and me unless it's harmful to you or others, okay? Uh, so ask about dyspareunia question. Um, also, you can ask about, do you have 
are you practicing like uh, first you should ask about are you sexually active uh, do you have a stable relationship even your partner ever be diagnosed with any sti before any multiple partner history before if your patient mentioned yes doctor i do have a stable relationship please ask like how long you are in this relationship in the past any history of multiple partner okay so basically, five P questions. So five, uh, five P, one P for period question. When was your last menstrual period? That is your key point in here. You should ask because you need to rule out. It's not a to be. It's not a not any any type of miscarriage. Okay. Uh, pill question, partner, um, pregnancy. Uh, another P for Baptist. But now you can ask about any cervical screening. Okay. Um. Otherwise, patient generally healthy, social history unremarkable. So, physical examination finding in here, um, patient uh, looks a bit unbalanced. Here, temperature increase, um, abdominal findings, there is like tenderness on the lower tummy. Um, also, in pelvic examination, there is positive findings regarding discharge from the endocervix with cervical motion tenderness. Other investigation finding, other physical examination finding are normal. So whenever you notice there is some discharge, you should say, like, I'm going to collect that sample and send for frontal microscopy, uh, like MCS examination, okay? Um, now, Investigation, what investigation you have to order? Your key investigation is urine pregnancy test, urine dipstick test, urine microscopic culture, and also like that discharge microscope. Like you need to collect the swab and send for microscopic culture examination. Okay. ABC UNE, apart from that, ABC UNE, CRP, if patient having temperature, blood culture, definitely. So any type of like if you notice there is slightly rising of temperature, you should order septic screening along with all the urine, MCAs. If there is any own, own swab, you should order those things, okay? Um, STI screening with your patient consent. And uh, you are going to collect the endocervical swab for chlamydia gonorrhea as well. Um, what scan you are going to order for this patient? Basically, we are going to order like abdominal ultrasound, okay? But you can say, I'm going to first discuss with my senior. Probably we are going to do like scan or ultrasound of your tummy, okay? So most likely my diagnosis here is pelvic inflammatory disease uh, because you are complaining about lower tummy pain. And you are also having fever, some discharge, history of multiple partner, um, not practicing sepsis. So it could be due to infection um, that is affecting your, like, you know, uh, uh, female uh, reproductive organ. So you can mention, like, uh, pelvic inflammatory disease. Uh, can be sexually transmitted or caused by like any ascending infection from your vaginal flora. Um, okay, it can cause like, uh, it can be caused by um, chlamydia or gonorrhea. And common symptoms patient might present with us, lower tummy pain, discharge, irregular vaginal bleeding, pelvic tenderness, those things, okay? What could be the complication? If we are not going to treat that patient, uh, it can cause infertility, chronic pelvic pain can happen, and also ectopic pregnancy can happen. So the management, please ask about allergies. Uh, whenever you are going to prescribe antibiotic, please ask about allergies, okay? That is, it's a bug infection, so we are going to treat with antibiotic. If you can remember the antibiotic name, that would be really great, or you can say, as per the guideline, we can start you with antibody, okay? And after ruling out with any allergies. And please advise your patient regarding sepsis, um, because that can possibly, happen, like uh, that PID can cause like infertility. 
So advise your patient step six. Uh, you are going to follow up this patient, review like two to three days later on um, to check how the patient is responding with treatment or not. And yeah, definitely all that, uh, you are going to chase all the investigation finding as well. So that's the guideline you can follow. Uh, mild to moderate infection, you can treat with outpatient. CVR case, you can treat in inpatient treatment. Okay. Um, Dr. Rand, uh, you are asking about physical examination finding. If you are uh, doing online exam, how, how can we go about the examination? If you are talking about physical examination finding from examiner, um, you will get P um, like you will get the card, okay? Card means like it will pop up on your screen. Is there a timer in the exam? Definitely. Uh, for online candidate, um, when eight minute finished, um, you will be automatically uh, like, you know, uh, out of the room. So that's why like you have to be careful, like all the key points you need to mention within eight minute time, okay? Uh, yes, that's the tricky part. Um, how we can keep track of the time? That's why I advise, like, try to do role play as much as you can so that your brain can also, like, uh, um, having the, you know, memory about the time. Uh, because, like, as long as you are doing role play, um, you can already have the knowledge, like, how much I, I need to take history. And uh, like what things you have to ask and what things you can still skip to save your time, okay? Without role play, it's very difficult. And you are not allowed to keep any watch or any timer on your exam, okay? How do you know if we should admit a patient? If your patient is severely uh, symptomatic, you, you need to admit this patient in the hospital. So if your patient is hemodynamically unstable, fever not controlled with normal Panadol, um, yeah, that time you can admit the patient. But it depends again. Uh, because mild to moderate, as I told, um, outpatient follow-up and the severe treatment, it should be inpatient, okay? Um, I didn't get you, Dr. Hassan, like you want to gain like gonorrhea directly rather than like PID. Like look, PID is an umbrella term, okay? So you are not sure unless like that is microscopic examination was done. So you can say like, I'm suspecting it's a pelvic inflammatory disease, but more common uh, like bug, it could be gonorrhea or chlamydia. That's why I already collect the swab and send for further investigation.
when uh, candidate asks me like, do you have multiple sexual partner before? I I said currently I'm having a stable partner. Okay, and your next question would be like, how long you are having this stable partner? Um, for online exam, for example, in this case, this uh, this is your examination finding, okay? Um, you will get that examination finding on your screen. So my advice would be, whenever you, you are going to read it, just read it loudly and explain to your patient, okay? Uh, so yeah, prompt timer, if your task is take a history, not more than three minutes or not more than four minutes. So after three or four minutes later on, um, you will get the prompt timer. So um, like uh, you can heard that they, they will mention like your three minute finished or um, your dedicated three minute or four minutes already finished. Yeah, focused history, you should ask about all the topic pain and discharge question. Um, your differential, it could be all pregnancy related differential, it could be ectopic or any type of miscarriage. It could be rupture, ovarian cyst, torsion, ovulation pain, ovarian tumor, PID, any other surgical uh, acute abdomen, for example, appendicitis, diverticulitis, uh, IBD, uh, pyelonephritis, or it could be UTI, okay? Okay, let's move to the next one. Otherwise, we cannot finish today. Uh, Uh, who will be the next person? Uh, Dr. Priyanka, are you there? Hello. Hello, Doctor. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, this is your case and your two minute stress now.
Okay. Hi, Emma. Uh, this is Dr. Priyanka, one of the GPs over here. Um, doctor, can I know the mother's name as well? Yeah, mother's name Jenny. Okay. Hi, Jenny. Uh, I understand that your daughter is uh, having fever. Before we proceed, can I talk to my examiner and come back to you? Is that all right, Jenny? Yes, doctor, you can. Is my patient hemodynamically stable to proceed? Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, examiner. So, Jenny, thank you for waiting. Um, so, I understand your daughter is having uh, a fever. Is that right? Uh, yes, doctor, and I'm really concerned about you, doctor. Okay, I'm really sorry, but please don't worry. Now that you're here, we'll try and find what's happening. Okay, so since when your daughter signed fever? No, uh, last uh, three, four days, doctor. Three, four days, okay. Has it been worsening since then? or yes, has it been? It's two okay. days, it's really getting worse. Okay, so is this continuous fever or on and off? On and off. Okay, is the fever associated with some rashes or chills? Uh, I noticed some chills, but no rash. Okay, okay. Um, so the fever is, is getting worse by anything? Like, it, if you give medication, does it improve? Yeah, it helps for a bit, but again, okay. the fever came back. Okay, there's no rashes, right? No. Okay. Uh, any cough? Yeah, Emma is coughing a lot. Mm -hmm. So can you describe the cough? Is she like cough, cough and vomiting at the end? Mm, no, not like that. Okay. Is the cough has any uh, uh, sputum or any color discharge along with the cough? Just a phlegm. Sorry? Phlegm. Okay. Um, is, is, uh, is there any blood did you notice while coughing? No. Okay. Is there any runny nose? She having? Yeah, doctor. Okay. Um, is she um, is she having any uh, fast breathing associated with this? With the um, yes, with the cough. Okay. So all these been happening for four days. Yeah. Okay. Is uh, did you know notice any vomiting along with these things? Uh, yes, doctor. Uh, she did. Um have vomiting like maybe two or three times today uh, during this time oh okay all right and uh did you notice any ear discharge and pulling her ears out anything like that mm, not really okay uh did you uh notice any uh, discharge from eyes mm, no okay uh, uh how is her uh Appetite. How is how is she is she feeding well? Uh, no, doctor. Uh, her feeding also reduced. Okay. Since when? No, same time. Okay. Okay. Is she taking solids now? Uh, yeah, doctor. Uh, she's three years. Okay, fine. And how is her color? O and P. Is there any change in the color or amount? Uh, doctor. Uh, her P, I think um, that is reduced. Okay. Okay. Uh, how's her uh, poo? Uh, she passed stools regularly? Yeah, yesterday she did. Okay. And she's not been eating as well, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you notice any uh, uh, discoloration on her skin, like yellowish discoloration? No. Okay. Um, so, uh, is she up, immunized up to date? Uh, yes, doctor. Okay. Uh, was she a normal delivered child? Yeah. Okay. Any uh, uh, and developmental issues? What's that? Any developmental uh, problem? Uh, has she been growing well? Any problems no. with the development? No. With that. Okay. And uh, I'd like to know if uh, anyone in the family has any uh, sim similar symptoms? No, doctor. Okay. Did you guys travel recently anywhere? No. Okay. Um, okay. Any past medical history? She has like heart conditions? No. 
Okay. Uh, once after a delivery, was she uh, healthy and uh, did, did she have to be admitted for some time after delivery? She was, uh, yeah, she was healthy. She was healthy. Okay. Okay. Any uh, family history of any uh, lung problems or heart problems? No. Okay. All right. Um, Emma, thank you very much for your, uh, Jenny, thank you very much for answering. Uh, I would like to talk to my examiner now. To examiner, uh, I'd like to uh, do the physical examination for Emma. I would like to know uh, my patient's general appearance, alert, drowsy or irritable. So Emma is irritable, but uh, she is alert. Okay. Any signs of dehydration present? So you can appreciate there is a like moderate sign of dehydration. Okay. Any signs of respiratory distress seen? You can appreciate there is a nasal flaring, accessory muscle use, and rapid breathing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to know the uh, pulse rate and respiratory rate, please. So respiratory rate is 20. Pulse okay. rate is uh, 78. Okay. Um, okay. I would like to know the oxygen saturations. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'd like to do a UNT examination. Uh, is there any discharge from ears, nose, and any throat findings? No. Okay. I'd like to do a respiratory system examination. On inspection, uh, is my patient uh, bilateral chest moves equally? Um, any other things that you want to know? Uh, any, uh, uh, is the respiratory sounds heard, additional crackles or any additional sounds heard? So you can appreciate there is a decreased breathing sound and there is also right side dullness positive. Right side dullness, okay. Um, and a serious examination, is there any findings, any abnormal heart sounds? No. Okay. Um, uh, any rashes present on anywhere? No. I would like to do an office test. Uh, I'd like to do a urine dipstick. Okay, you can order. Okay. Uh, and, uh, is that, uh, and I'd like to also order an x-ray. Okay. So this is an x-ray of a uh, three-year-old Emma. Uh, uh, the the areas the white areas are the bones and the black areas of the uh, the are the spaces filled with air and as you can appreciate uh, the left side on the lower lobe there is some uh, whitish area that we can appreciate and uh, this this is uh, this is this looks like a pleural effusion uh, which means there's some fluid accumulated in the lung and as we can appreciate from the findings of auscultation that there was dullness on the left side as well. Um, yes, doctor, I'll go to the next task. Okay. Okay. So, Time's up. Oh, okay. Okay, what's your diagnosis? My diagnosis is pleural effusion secondary to pneumonia. Yeah. Exactly. Um, very big case. Uh, history that was really, really nice. You didn't miss anything. Perfect history. Physical examination. Um, you are going online or be uh, face to face? Online, doctor. Online. Okay. So that could save your time. Um, and yeah, explain X-ray management. Just the time management issue. Otherwise, like it was really nice. Most okay. of the history you already asked me. Um, I just want to tell you, even though you are going for online, um, just uh, keep remember in uh, your mind regarding neck stiffness. Yeah, okay. Meaning of okay. yeah, okay. it's really nice. Um, so three years, Emma, old girl, presented to you with fever, 39 degree temperature. So task is history. PFE, he explain X-ray and management. Again, it's like lots of tasks. Um, time management is the biggest issue in here. Um, uh, you start asking with hemodynamic stability. Now, lots of students asking me about like, if you are going for online exam, how you are going to ask hemodynamic stability. You don't need to worry about these things because most of the case is stem will be given about patient vital sign, okay? 
so for example, in this case, uh, you will get the details vital sign. Okay, this time we will mention you details vitals like temperature, blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory saturation, those things. Okay, if this time will not tell you about any vital sign, you can still uh, mention that uh, Jenny, I'm going to check first Emma's vital sign and then proceed further. Is that all right for you? Like in this way, so you can also let the examiner know that you are checking vital sign first, okay? Because in online exam, nobody will answer like except your um, except your uh, role player, okay? Uh, so here, check hemodynamic stability, ask about fever question, ask about like, um, how long that thing's going on, ask about uh, is it constant or on and off, how high it is, any chills, rigor, or any night sores, any rash, any chest symptoms you should ask. Also any recent viral infection, um, like any runny nose, sore throat, cough, dry or wet cough, describe like if that is positive, ask about the positive findings any rapid breathing, okay? Ask about the positive findings. Uh, chest pain or tightness as well, uh, but that is only you know, three years old. So sometimes like definitely three years will not tell you about any chest pain or tightness. Uh, you can ask about any GIT symptoms, any tummy pain, any vomiting. Um, you, you can ask about uh, details, uh, bowel habit question. Ask about dehydration findings, um, a dehydration question. How about um, like feeding? You can ask um, any uh, like. Um, uh, did you notice uh, look, um, Emma looks drowsy or she looks sleepy? Uh, ask about details. Water works, eating and feeding, um, birth immunization, nutrition development, those things. Okay, any sick person contact, any travel history, um, please ask those things. So here basically physical examination finding, um, patient vital sign, temperature only 39, along with there is some respiratory findings as well. So you can appreciate there is some right side dullness and also there is decreased breath sound as well. Um, so the chest x-ray, that is the x-ray you need to explain to the mom, okay? So if you, you need to explain to the mom, so please avoid the medical jargon. Sometimes uh, I notice task would be like explain x-ray to the examiner. That time you can use medical jargon, okay? So mention that this is the chest x-ray of your child and uh, just... Uh, you can um, told, um, like you can tell to, um, to the mom that lung field looks clear, like what do you notice? Either it looks clear or not, what about the heart size? It looks normal or not? Uh, so you need to compare both sides, okay? So what I'm following, I'm just following A, B, C. So A for ER, that is like, uh, can you appreciate that trachea and also the lung marking? Um, B for bones, so just mention like that uh, whitish shadow that is the bones or the rib case, and C for uh, cardiac, that means C for heart shadow. So just mention that heart shadow is normal or not. D for diaphragm, so diaphragm, can you appreciate that is in the normal position and the, or that's going higher up? Explain to the mom, okay? And if you're following A, B, C, D, like most of the thing you are telling, okay, you are not missing anything. Um, so here, um, X-ray findings, what do we notice? There is like, uh, um, when we are comparing both lungs, there is like a white shadow on the bottom of the left side of the lung. And also there is a wind pipe. I noticed something like that is pushed towards the right side. And also there is an angle, uh, both like right or left side, you can mention like those things, like I can notice like that appears lost. So X-ray findings, uh, it's suggestive uh, 
para, um, like paradiumonic effusion, which is a accumulation of the fluid between the two lung covering. And um, I'm thinking um, that is the secondary to pneumonia or the infection. Okay. Um, what is pneumonia? You can say infection or uh, infection of the lung caused by the bug. Okay. And that is the reason that MI is having that high grade of temperature. It could be TB or uh, like it could be TB due to other infective features as well. Um, it could be heart, kidney, or liver problem, and that can cause accumulation of the fluid. Um, so management, what could be the management if patient temperature is really high, dehydrated, um, admission, uh, definitely admit. Um, this patient needs to be reviewed by the like pediatric specialist. Um, and in the meantime, what we are going to do, open the IV channel, take the blood sample for investigation, including blood culture, MCH as well. And after taking the sample, we are going to start antibiotic after ruling out any allergies, okay? And uh, based on the X-ray, like plural effusion, specialists might decide like either they are going to collect the fluid from the chest or not, okay? But that will be decided by the specialist or pediatric specialist. So that's the case, paraneumonic effusion, secondary to pneumonia. Um, Uh, examiner will not be there in online exam, only role player and you will be there. Uh, that's why um, if you are asking something to your examiner, nobody will answer because no examiner will be there in online exam, only role player and you. Um, that's why you need to say to your patient, um, like whatever your patient name, like I'm going to check your vital sign first and then I'm going to ask you a few questions, is that all right? Uh, if your task is uh, tell the differential to your examiner, you can like talk and you can mention like my differential or I'm thinking those, those things, okay? It will be recorded, so you don't need to worry. Uh, for the vitals, as I told you, most of the case, uh, you will get vital sign on the stem. It will be given on the stem, okay? If that's not even, so you can say like, I'm going to check vital sign first and then proceed. Uh, to be honest, my exam, uh, because I was the first candidate like for online exam, and I noticed like all my like cases, vital sign was given on the stem. So you don't need to worry about it. So painkiller is not for the examiner. For painkiller, you should ask about like, um, uh, for example, your patient mentioned, doctor, I'm having pain. You can say like, okay, uh, I'm going to add a painkiller after ruling out any allergies. Why you need to talk to your examiner for that one? Um, in here, you are a doctor, so um, your action matters a lot. So if your patient complaining about pain, your next step would be arranging pain clear, killer. And that's why examiner will give you the marking, okay? Okay, so let's move to the last case. Uh, who will be the last person, like anyone, any new 
candidate wants to perform, just please write your name. Uh, because I can see many of our like regular student uh, write their name, but I'm so sorry for today. Um, just try with uh, some new candidate, is that all right? Um, Dr. Rubina, did you perform with me before? Okay, sure. So let's try. Hello. Yeah. Hello, doctor. Hi. Hi, how are you? This is your case and your two minute starts now. You can start. Hi, Rachel. My name is Dr. Rubina. I will be your GP today. Um, I just read from your notes. You are you've come here to discuss the home birth options. I hope you're doing well. Um, yes, Doctor. Actually, I want to know what could be my option if um, I prefer home birth. You know, because that would be like more familiar environment rather than hospital. Um, actually, you are right about that. Um, we can uh, talk about, we can discuss about that. But before that, if you don't, can I ask you a few questions? No, uh, sure, doctor. Thank you, uh, Rachel. Um, is this your year? Yeah, is I I just read that it's your first pregnancy. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, you, um, it's your 30th week. Rachel, uh, how are you doing till now? Um, so far, good, doctor. Okay. You got your last ultrasound done on 18th week? Uh, yes, doctor. Yeah. Oh, and all the signs and symptoms afterwards, everything is normal? Yeah. Okay. And I just read your OGTT is good as well. You have no other sign and symptoms. You just have come here to ask about, to discuss the home birth options. That's all? Uh, yes, doctor. 
Okay. Do you have any medical condition or any history that you would like to share? Uh, yes, uh, doctor, I'm having history of um, no other medical condition, doctor. N no other medical and no other surgical condition either? No. Any history of any surgery before? No. Okay. And any allergy to any sort of drugs? Uh, no. Okay. So before I proceed, I would like to do your examination. Can you excuse me for a second? Yes. I have to ask my examin examiner. Um, I want to know the, the findings of the patient, Rachel. Is she vitally stable at the moment? Um, yes. Okay. And... Um, Okay, she's vitally stable. Everything is good. Um, her blood pressure and vitals are fine. And uh, no signs of infection or nothing. Everything is good. Physical examination findings are unremarkable. Okay. And uh, what about her pregnancy? The, her um, her upper abdominal findings? So, fundal height 30 centimeter, fetal heart normal, lie okay. and presentation careful. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, examiner. Uh, okay, Rachel. Um, okay, so we are back, Rachel. Um, yes, so you, why do you want to go for the home birth? Can you tell me, please? Uh, yes, doctor, two weeks ago, my friend um, had similar experience and my friend told me that it was um, it was wonderful experience for her and she prefers to have a home birth um, so that like uh, um, she told me it was a nice experience. So I, I think right now, like if I'm going for a home birth delivery, so... Um, I can have a like more familiar environment, not surrounded by like, you know, other people. Okay. Is that the only reason you want to go for the home birth? Because, uh, because you want to give birth in your own home? Yeah. Okay. No other reason. No. Okay. You can, uh, as long as I just saw, found out from your uh, previous ultrasound that we did at 18th week, it was all good. Apparently, everything seems good. But Rachel, um, you know, in pregnancy, every, anything, uh, everything changes even at the last moment. So I cannot uh, uh, assure you that you should, you can go for the home birth. It totally depends as the pregnancy um, progresses, anything can happen. Sometimes the position of the baby changes. Sometimes um, fetal heart rate changes. A lot of things can happen. Not that I'm trying, I'm just trying to tell you that uh, right now at this moment, if you are asking about it, yes, you can go for it as you want to go for it on, on your own. But uh, I would rather suggest you uh, if you are asking about my opinion, we will rather wait till the end of the pregnancy and see if everything is fine. We can wait till 38 weeks and then we will repeat the ultrasound. If everything seems normal, then yes, you can go for the home birth. So you mean like if uh, last moment, my uh, if my everything will be okay, I can go for home birth? Yes, you can. If everything is normal till the end. Okay. Anything else that I need to know, doctor? Anything? Um, I'm sorry, but I just very new case for me, so I really don't know what to say. Okay, that's totally okay. But Dr. Rumina, it was really nice performance. Um, history is <laughs> okay. Um, just a bit more. You need to explain why home birth um, is one of the options, but it's not advisable, especially like if there's a fast pregnancy because 
you already explained to me you already mentioned like anything can happen any like anything could be changed anytime okay so that is not the good option but yeah home birth is the option other option you can discuss okay so let's discuss the case you can understand what point you can add for mm -hmm. your advice regarding home birth okay okay uh so next question. Yeah. can i ask you a question mm -hmm. doc i just want to know if like they 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 have written here take a further history from them what kind of further history like what kind of questions can i ask here can you just tell me definitely in here your patient is right now 30 weeks pregnant isn't it did you ask me any third trimester complication question i just asked you if you have any current symptoms but you said everything is good okay so, <laughs> i can totally understand um the thing is that that is your exam okay that is, that is not in our daily basis that we are like just seeing our patient it's not like that so in for mc clinical you have to ask to your patient a specific question if you're not asking any specific question you will not get any findings okay so okay. if you're asking like uh, do you have any current symptoms your patient will um, like your patient might answer like what symptoms you uh, you are looking for or what um, like uh, what's that so you should ask about all the third trimester complication question for example do you have any headache any blooding of vision any uh, any pedal edema any bleeding any discharge from your tummy uh, from your down mm -hmm. below, lower abdominal pain okay it's not yeah. like you should ask do you have any symptoms so definitely next question would be uh what symptoms you are asking doctor okay okay and and the examination question was it better to ask like that uh, tell me about the vitals please and the per abdominal uh, what else uh it's not like that again um yeah. my question is that um you are planning for next year or this year uh, like face to face or online online so online it will if your task is pfe it will pop up on the screen um mm -hmm. you will get the physical examination finding card so you need to explain to your patient like Rachel, we have done physical examination and uh, we noticed like all of your physical examination findings till now is unremarkable like that way you can explain oh, thank you doctor thank you oh, i hope next time i do better than this yeah uh, definitely like uh, um that's why i'm here and that's why i encourage everyone like try to do role play as much as you can and also uh perform with me so that because uh like look um i can uh like I can correct you which point you miss and which point you can add. Okay. Thank you. Love. Thank okay. you so much. Yeah. So let's discuss the case. Um, this case. Uh, so Rachel, 25 years old, primary gravida, who is 30 weeks pregnant. Um, until now, like her pregnancy um, is uneventful and uh, her 18 weeks ultrasound like that is showing single baby, proper position, um, OZTT was normal and uh, she's just coming today uh, to discuss with you regarding home birth option. So your task is take a further history from the patient, examination finding from the examiner and advice regarding home birth. So here, as I told to Dr. Rubina, what, what does it mean by taking like a uh, further focus history? Um, you need to rule out there is no underlying or no third trimester complication, okay? Um, so ask your patient, like introduce yourself nicely. Um, uh, ask that um, why you want to go for home delivery. Uh, is there any specific reason? So your patient might tell you yes doctor i you i want to do that uh home birth because of like more familiar environment okay mm. um and then like mention about uh so um, after that you can ask about um okay i'm going to ask you a few more questions so that i can understand how your brain is going so far um 
uh, can you tell me, do you have any tummy pain, any bleeding, any watery discharge from your down below to loud any like uh, preterm labor or any uh, just uh, false labor pain, those things, uh, premature rupture of labor uh, membrane, those things, okay? Uh, Preeclampsia, uh, placenta abruption, those are the third trimester complications. That's why you should ask about um, any headache, blurring of vision, uh, leg swelling, also any severe tummy pain um do you feel baby key those things okay uh so ultrasound was done 18 weeks any um uh, did you book your repeat scan um did you take folic acid how's your diet how's your regular activities any smoking alcohol, um, any any issues happen during your pregnancy, like any infection or anything. I noticed your sugar drink test was normal. That's a good sign. You can ask about bowel bladder habit question for this patient. And ask about why do you prefer a home birth, okay? So basically her friend uh, told her about the home birth uh, option and patient wants that for more familiar environment, okay? Um, so physical examination finding here unremarkable. Um, here the counseling part is that you can say, I can understand that you want a home delivery as uh, you have said that it can be more familiar environment um, for you where you could feel more comfortable, but home birth has got like certain limitation. Okay, um, I am here to discuss those things because uh, as I can see, like um, so far your pregnancy is going well. Um, so within maybe eight to nine weeks, uh, um, you are going to have delivery. So just in case you or your baby develop any complication like any sharp rise of blood pressure in you or any bleeding, or any early rupture of membrane or preterm labor, um, like or your labor happened before 36, definitely home birth is not advised, okay? And any time, if the baby becomes unwell or if the baby kids become less, again, home delivery is not advisable because the complications are more likely to happen during first pregnancy rather than the subsequent one, okay? Now coming to the labor, same, all labors are unpredictable and complication at the time of the labor sometimes cannot be like, uh, um, we cannot recognize as well. So the first thing we have to consider is that your pelvis is roomy or not, as you have no previous deliveries, so we do not know how the pelvis is going to behave, okay? There could be fetal distress at the time of labor, uh, or there could be cord prolapse can happen, um, or any stage the labor could be obstructed, or could be like any excessive bleeding can happen during or after the delivery. So those things cannot be managed at home, okay? That's why it is always safe to have a delivery at the hospital, especially your first delivery, okay? Uh, because if any complication arise, there will be like, uh, you know, um, all the option available so that we can use efficiently. Um, and as I told you, all the necessary equipment are there to monitor you and your baby as well in the hospital. Uh, so, like at no stage will unnecessary intervention be done unless absolutely necessary. Sometimes your patient might tell you, doctor, I'm afraid, like uh, I heard that like hospital might go for unnecessary cesarean section. So you can say like, unless absolutely necessary, like no intervention will be done, okay? And definitely by the end of the day, it's your choice. But if you're quite sure that you want to have a home birth, uh, then we need to make a backup plan. Okay, backup plan with consultant or with a specialist, okay? Um, you can ask like, may I know how far you are living from the hospital, the transport facilities available, um, and do you have enough support? You should ask. And also what I can do, I can enroll you to the uh, midwife 
like midwife program. So that same midwife will take care of you, your pregnancy and your delivery and after the delivery as well. Okay, so she, she will uh, be knowing everything about you as well as your pregnancy condition, everything. And uh, you can say other option, it could be due to like a uh, uh, family birth suit, which is like home-like maternity care facility. Just say halfway through, like you can say, it's a kind of halfway between the home and the hospital. And that thing is attached to the hospital. And that is run by the team of midwives. Okay. Uh, you can say like, in case any complication happen, you will be taken to the hospital immediately because that is attached to the hospital. Okay. Uh, um, you can also discuss uh, um, about that family birth suit. Uh, there is a, only the problem is they cannot give you epidural uh, because for the epidural, we need to do continuous monitoring. Okay, so for this discussion, if you are like, uh, uh, if you really want to go for like home birth, um, I can refer you to the specialist who will be the best person to discuss with this. And you can provide you, um, you 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 can provide to your patient reading materials. Okay. So that's a case for home birth delivery uh, counseling case. Basically, it's a counseling case, so you need to give information um, as much as you can. But always remember. When you are giving information, you should check your patient understanding, okay? Yeah, most of the, like, as I told, like, it's a primary patient, so home birth is not advisable for this patient. But if a patient really wants to go for home birth, what we can do, like at the end of the day, it's a patient choice. So we can provide all the reading materials, a specialist appointment for further discussion. Okay. Uh, so that's all for today. How's the class? I hope like I try to explain as much as I can, but as I told you, uh, this is the role play session. It's not like a uh, uh, definitive case I'm discussing. I'm just doing random cases. So people who already booked or like halfway through, like uh, they already have their structure. So yeah, uh, they can understand, but definitely I encourage to the beginner as well, so that beginner can also understand like how the case is coming to your exam, okay? So for the history structure, physical examination structure, all the structure and cluster wise approach you will get from your theory course, okay? Uh, so who are the beginner? Uh, that, that's why like uh, we advise to join that theory course uh, so that you can understand like how you need to take a history, physical examination, how you need to explain to your patient, um, and how to take history, like, as I told you, like pediatrics, ONG, psychiatric, medicine, surgery, every, every specialty, uh, they have their own structure of taking history, okay? And uh, you also notice that in my case, like when I'm going to discuss, like I'm just mentioning, for example, in here, I'm just mentioning SADMA, uh, BISMA. I'm not explaining in details, okay? Because as I told, it's a role play session. So uh, for SADMA, BISMA or other things, 
for that, uh, you need to know the structure uh, and your theory course will have those things, okay? Uh, it depends. Um, you will get like uh, in your exam, how many counseling cases are there in exam? It depends again. Uh, most likely you might get like two to three counseling cases, but it depends to be honest. Um, do you have any other question? Uh, my next role play session, it will be uh, next week, Monday, same time uh, from 8 p.m. Sydney time. All right, everyone. So I guess the class is done. Thank you, Dr. Cynthia. Okay, so how did you guys go with this class? So you can understand that like the these classes are important and especially because you can do the role play, you can get the feedback and also you can improve your mistakes. So these are obviously a very important part of your MC clinical preparation. Okay. So we'll finish it here tonight. If you guys don't have any questions, is there any questions that you have regarding the course, classes, anything? And Dr. Pathma Nadan, I can see you talked about recent new cases. So this gender dysphoria, those, those, those are the ones which will be discussed in the classes, especially in the course. So there is no problem with that. Are there clinical procedures asked in online exam? By clinical procedure, you might mean about clinical examinations. Yes, examination comes come in online exam, which means that how to do a, let's say, urinary catheterization, how to do a cervical smear. So all of those come in exam. So And obviously, that will be discussed in the class. Oh, good. So, seems like you don't have any questions. We'll finish it here tonight then, and we'll see you in the next class. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.